pyramids of Giza. How did people who hadn't even invented the wheel build these things and why? They are so big, they are so precise, they are so directionally oriented and they are so mysterious. At first glance, they really do like out of this world. But the thing is, the pyramids are much older than we probably think. They were already ancient history to people in ancient history which led to some pretty wild theories about how they come to be. But pyramid technology didn't just show up out of nowhere. It was the end product of centuries of scientific and cultural evolution of people figuring it out. And it definitely wasn't aliens. In today's episode, we are going to talk about the pyramids of Giza. Welcome to HR Podcast. Early on, Egyptians buried their dead like we do. The desert naturally mummified some corpses which influenced their religious beliefs, like you need to preserve the body to reach the afterlife, and when you get there, you will need all your stuff. Rich people's graves had nicer stuff, and they needed to protect their afterlife investment, first with simple mounds and later with mud brick eternal houses. Then a king named Zazer was like, why have one little mud mastaba when I can have six stone mastabas in a stack? So he stacked six stone mastabas like a mastaba boss and the age of pyramids had begun. This was literally the first time humans had piled stones this high. Egyptians knew totally vertical walls got less stable as they got taller. So judges architect stacked bricks at an incline and let gravity do the work. Step pyramid achieved. But why pyramids and not other shape? If you want to make a big pile of blocks, a pyramid gets you the most stability for the least material. A third of the way up, you have already laid two thirds of your stone. Halfway, you have placed more than 80%, and that's how it is. Next comes Nefru. He built his own step pyramid, but then decided he wanted a smooth one instead. So they started on the second one. No one had ever built one of those before, so they made some mistakes. For starters, they built it on the sand, which is soft, they laid blocks carelessly and it was too steep, so halfway through, they changed the slope and ended up with a pile of stands. Snefro was like, you are not bearing me in that, so he ordered a third pyramid. Only this time, they built a solid foundation, laid the stones in horizontal rows and precision cut the edges. Snefro's motto, if at first you don't succeed, try again, and then try again one more time. Snepno had experimented his way to a blueprint for building awesome pyramids. The great pyramids of Giza, built by his son, took that blueprint to the next level. Snefru's son, Kufo's pyramid reminded the tallest structure on earth for almost 4,000 years until some chest tower in the year 1311 which fell down, so it was tallest again until Eiffel Tower was finished in 1889. Kufo's son, Kafre, built his pyramid night next to his dad's, and he didn't stop innovating. Instead of leveling the entrance for the 6,000 square meter footprint, he built his pyramid over a natural stone mound and only leveled the outer edge, which was less work and 3 meters shorter than his dad's. But this higher ground creates the illusion that Kafre's pyramid is taller. But even these seemingly perfect pyramids weren't without mistakes. Kafres had a slight twist and then the top in order to make the edges line up evenly. What is remarkable is Egypt's biggest stone pyramids were the product of just three human generations, but those were generations full of trial and error. Pyramid building continued for nearly 700 years and like any product, efficiency started to win out over quality. Kings still wrapped their pyramids in fine white limestone, but over the next thousand years, that was removed by stone stealers and rock robbers, leaving the cheaply produced cores to collapse into rubble, which is probably why we have never heard of them. 
Ironically, the kings were probably disappointed by the whole afterlife thing, but the pyramids themselves have proven to be surprisingly resilient. Ancient is not a synonym for stupid. The world's first skyscrapers were tombs, and just like our own buildings, they didn't spring up out of nowhere. They were the product of centuries of engineering, trial and error. Go back 500 years and show someone a smartphone, they would probably think you are a magician. But when we look back from the present at the ideas and failures along the way, we see that it's not magic at all, it's science.